Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm painting Unicorn in Magical Mist and I'm sipping on some green tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're gonna find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, cobalt blue, purple violet, Mars black, green oxide, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, deep yellow, and fluorescent pink. And of course, you can certainly switch those up, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a seven inch wide paper plate, which we'll have fun with later. I have a standard number two pencil, and then I have three brushes. I have, let's see here, a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number eight round brush, and round synthetic brush, and I have a number zero round synthetic brush, and I will refer to these as small, medium and large as we go through the painting process and of course you can switch those up a bit too if you like to and if you're painting along with me you're probably going to want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes and down below this video i will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process one of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that i'm using from the large canvas to even the fancy paper plate. <laughs> so that's all in there for you. Um, there's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for our first step is we're painting our background. So I'm gonna be using my large brush. The colors that I'm using are black, blue, purple, and white. And how I'm gonna do this, I will be applying it in a circular type of motion, but I want it to kind of be dreamy-esque and make it look like there's almost a glow behind the unicorn. So I'm gonna have my lightest area in through here. My darkest area is gonna be down at the bottom and on this left hand side and then I'll have like medium tones up through the out the top so I'm going to just kind of start at the top and just work my way down but just know that I'm going to be going for my lightest area with mostly white on my brush in through here I will not be washing my brush throughout this process every time I go to pick up paint I'm just going to pick up a different combination of paint and I will be applying it in a circular motion so that way I have these different hues and shades throughout the entire painting so I'm just going to start up at the top right hand corner with a little bit of blue and purple on my brush at the same time and I'm just going to be applying it with this circular type motion now I'm going to pick up a little bit of white just to get it to be a little bit softer looking and of course you can have yours as light or as dark as you want it's totally up to you you could either even incorporate different colors. You have pink on your palette. You could certainly use some pink in there. You could throw some orange in there. <laughs> Whatever works for you is totally fine by me. And again, I'm just kind of doing a little bit darker up um, in the top kind of corners and down the, the left hand side that I'm going to be going for my lightest of colors is going to be in this. This vicinity is going to be the lightest, but I'm going to kind of work my way towards there. As I come into the painting, I'm going to be adding into the center, I'm going to be adding more white to my brush. And again, yours doesn't have to be exactly as mine. We're going to have a big, huge unicorn that's going to be covering the majority of this painting. So know that even if yours, you know, turns out different and you're not totally sold on it, I wouldn't cast too much judgment until after you put your unicorn on because you may find that once that unicorn is on, 
this just becomes background noise, which is what it, the, in, the intent is. So you don't really have to worry about it being super duper perfect at this point. Um, if you do have any adjustments that you want to make after you've got the unicorn on there, that's totally cool. And it's kind of will be an easy type of process to to make those modifications once the unicorn is on because you'll just have a little bit of space throughout it and again I'm just kind of going lighter and lighter as I get down towards this region so I'm picking up quite a bit of white on my brush right now and if you don't get it to go as light as you want you could certainly wash and dry your brush if you wanted to or you could um, you know just kind of work the, the colors off in another area like I'm working some of the blue off of my brush over here so I can get it to go a little bit lighter in this area so now I'm just picking up more white and you can see I'm leaving some of these colors to, to be representational on their own so I'm not over blending which would mean that I would be creating a solid color throughout the painting so this is where I'm going into my lightest region after I get this on there I will start to um, add quite a bit of darkness to the bottom area, but I'm just kind of getting this on here, making sure that I've got this center area as light and as blended as I want. Maybe a touch more purple over in through here. Yeah, see, you can just kind of tweak it as you want. You can keep adding these, these light colors or dark colors. You know, you could of course add a bit of pink if you wanted to, it's totally up to you. And now I'm gonna start adding some of my darker colors down the bottom. I feel like I have a ton of white on my brush right now, so I'm just gonna wipe it off on my paper towel. I can have some white on there, but I just don't want it to be too overpowering. I wanna be able to control what's happening on my canvas, and sometimes when you have too much paint on your brush, it becomes a little bit more difficult to control. I'm gonna to start to pick up a touch of black at this point so I can get some, some darker areas down in through here, and then I'm gonna just kinda of alternate my purple, blue, and um, white to get this to make sure that it all blends in with each other and makes sense. And you can see I'm just continuing to have fun down at this bottom, creating this, uh, this is gonna be kind of our, our magical forest floor down at the bottom. So I'm just making sure that I've got it pretty darn dark um, to represent more along the lines of like shadows and stuff down at the bottom. And I'm just wiping my brush off on my paper towel because I want to put a little bit of maybe some purple coming up this side over here. So whenever you feel like you want to add a little bit or um, blend it just a little bit more, just making sure that you don't have too much paint on your brush will allow you to make those transitions in a, in a nice gentle kind of fashion. I know I have this area down here, but I'm gonna, I'm working my way towards it. I just wanna make sure that I've got all of these other colors the way that I want them to be. And now I'm gonna go right ahead and just get this bottom part all nice and finished in through here. More purple, more blue, maybe a little bit more of the white in a second here, but just gonna make sure that I've got as much on here as I want. Just picking up a bit of white now to get this all to kind of blend in in through here and I want it to almost look uh, I don't want to say foggy down at the bottom but definitely an air of you know mist or or a you know a glow or a dreamy kind of um, fantasy type feel to it so you can certainly have fun with yours and again make it as light or as colorful or as dark as you want it's totally up to you and then we are going to be using our pencil for the next step so you can certainly sit and make more layers on this and tweak it as much as you want but you will want to um, put your large brush away for the next step you can take out your pencil let me just get these to blend just a little bit more take out your pencil and yeah that's looking pretty good and you can get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we are drawing an outline of our unicorn so i'm going to be using my pencil and i'm going to be using <clears throat> excuse me my fancy paper plate and I do want to forewarn you that before you start this step that you want to have your canvas dry. So, you know, you could either take that extra long break if you'd like to, or you can find any fanning method of your choice 
but I just whipped out my blow dryer to dry it. <laughs> so it'll make your, your sketching process much easier if, uh, if your surface is dry. So what I'm gonna first do is I'm gonna start with a large circle as my um, starting point. If you don't have a paper plate at the ready, this is, I'm going about seven inches um, wide by tall, so it's taking up a good portion of my canvas. Where I'm gonna place it is, if this is about the center of my canvas on the left to the right, I'm gonna kind of eyeball my halfway point, and I'm gonna come in about three inches and that's gonna put it, the center of my circle at the farthest over on the right-hand side. My top is going to be, you know, the three and a half inches higher than that, which would be right about here. So once you've got a good, a good place for it, you just take your pencil and draw a, a circle around it. Does not have to be a perfect circle, just something that you can see and kind of follow along with would be would be fine enough and then what we're going to do is we're going to make two subsequent circles to uh, give structure to our head so I'm going to have a small one where the where the muzzle is and then I'll have a larger one where the main area of the head is so I'm going to do my small one first my small one is going to be in this vicinity it's going to be about an inch and a half wide by an inch and a half tall and it's not gonna go out farther than this chest, more than I would say maybe a half of an inch to an inch. So if you kind of go from your farthest part out here, come out maybe about an inch and go straight up until you're just shy of the top of here. So somewhere in this vicinity, you're going to draw yourself and the, the left side of it is gonna be the side that is out that about an inch in it, um, about an inch from that area. So I'm gonna go something like this. And of course, once you've got this on here, you can certainly modify it and, you know, tweak it as much as you want to, but that's gonna be about the size of my circle that I'm doing. And then the next circle is going to be for the head. So I'm gonna, it's gonna be at least maybe two to three times as big as this one. I'm going to give you a, a couple of markers so you can kind of have a top to it and a left-hand side to it. So my top of it, I'm gonna be about an inch and a half away from the top of my canvas. And if, let's say this is the center, I'm about an inch, inch and a half to the left of that. So if you go over about an inch, inch and a half and down about an inch and a half, that'll give you the tippy top of the circle. And then the bottom of the circle is gonna be coming straight down here. It's gonna be about a half of an inch to an inch above here. So maybe somewhere about here and straight down. That'll give you the bottom of it. So whatever that length is, you can use your pencil as a ruler and you can kind of do this. This side should be just a little bit further out than your nose. So this looks about pretty good to me in through here. And then I've got my pencil as my measuring tool and somewhere in this vicinity. So I just gave myself the top, bottom, left, and right for my circle, and I'm just going to create my circle. So it doesn't have to be, again, a perfect circle. This is just giving you something that we can utilize as a good structure for the head, and it gives you um, good placement of the, of the features at, or of the structure and good proportion to it as well. So then I'm going to connect these two circles. I'm gonna start at the bottom of this one and I'm gonna give myself kind of an inward curved line, something like this to create the underside. And then the top side is almost gonna be straight from this edge to here. I'm gonna have it dipped in just a little bit, but not, not much at all, just a tiny, tiny bit, something like that. And then I'm gonna give myself an extra little piece of um, the, the little nose muzzle down in through here. So I just kind of bumped this little piece out just a, a little bit. And of course, if you're, if you're a horse lover, you can certainly tweak that as much as you want if you know the exact proportions on everything. Then what I'm gonna do is we're uh, somewhere in this vicinity where these, this intersection is, I'm gonna connect that to my chest. So this is gonna be a, a 
almost a vertical line in through here. And just as it's meeting where the, the face is, I'm just gonna kind of curve it just a little bit and just gradually get it to blend in with that area in through there. And of course you can tweak that as much as you want as well. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself the, the body area. So what I'm gonna do is if this is halfway up and down my canvas, I'm gonna come down about, I would say two and a half, three inches and make myself a mark. This is a little bit higher than here. So if you go straight over from the bottom of here and then go up maybe about half of an inch to an inch, that'll give you a good marker. I'm gonna connect here to about um, a little bit to the, the right of the center of my, my circle. So if this, is, if this is the center, I'm gonna go a little bit to the right, maybe about, I would say, an inch, and I'm going to connect this to here with a little bit of a sloping line. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna come down and just slope it ever so gently. It doesn't have to be a major slope, just a little one. That's gonna give us the underside of our beautiful uh, unicorn. And then at the top, I'm gonna go straight over from here, from the top of the circle, and then go up just a tiny, tiny bit. I'm gonna make myself another mark. This is going to create the back of our unicorn and the top of the butt. So I'm going to meet my circle somewhere in this vicinity. So I'm gonna come over with my butt like that, and I'm gonna slope it down and then kind of back up and give myself a gradual entry point into that circle in through there. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect this area, that, that intersecting point, with the top of my circle. This is gonna be the back of the neck or the main area. So I don't wanna scoop it in too much. This is a big mane. We're gonna have a lot of hair on it. So I'm almost gonna come like straight up from this section in through here. And then I won't really start curving it much until I get around here. So I'm gonna come pretty straight up in through here. And this is where I'm gonna start curving it. I'm gonna curve it way up towards that top in through here. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but this will give you a good, a good starting point. And of course, if you need to modify it, that's what pencils are for. You can erase them if you want to. Now I just need to make myself a couple of ears and a, and a unicorn horn and some legs and we'll be done. So my ears, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna have two, one's gonna be here and one's gonna be here. I'm gonna start the first one if I come straight up from that neck or kind of right in the middle of my circle, I'm gonna give myself just a little bit of a curved line like that. And then I'm gonna just bring it back in something like that. And then I'm going to do the second one. It's gonna be just about a half of an inch away from it and a little bit shorter um, coming down this way. So that way it looks like it's on the other side of the head. So, and of course you can certainly modify these all that you want. They'll be hidden with a lot of um, hair from the mane as well. And then I'm gonna give myself a, a horn of sorts. So the tip of my horn is going to be a little bit lower than the corner of this ear, way over to the left, maybe about, I don't know, um, just shy of the head height, and then maybe like two inches from the edge, so something like this. And then I'm just going to give myself a slightly diagonal line going into the forehead, and it's going to get wider here and more narrow here. So at the widest point where it enters the head, it's only maybe about a half of an inch to an inch wide. Nothing major, something like that. And of course you can keep tweaking that. Now we need to put on a couple of little legs. So at this intersecting point right in through here, this is gonna be the elbow of the leg that's closest to us. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give myself a little tiny diagonal line in through here, and then it's going to be an even more dramatic diagonal line. I'm gonna bring it shy of the, the chest. So it's gonna be come right about in through here. And then once I get to here, I'm gonna curve it and I'm gonna bring it down about half, maybe about two to three inches away from the bottom of my canvas because the feet are gonna be hidden within our grass. So we don't have to worry about that at all. So I need the front side of this leg. So I'm gonna come, if as soon as this 
um, circle start, starts to curve somewhere about in through here. This is where I'm going to put the um, top side of it. I'm going to come past the past here and past my chest maybe by I would say come past your chest maybe about an inch so something like this and then when I go to the knee I'm going to not make it too too curved I'm almost kind of squaring it off a little bit so it gives it that um, kind of the more realistic look to it and then just bring this down in through here and then I just need a back leg so my back leg is going to if you were to make an imaginary line from this corner because that's where it would come off of to about here and then I'm just going to give myself this one's going to be pretty pretty simple we're just going to kind of give it a little bit of a curve in through there come to the right about an inch and a half and just give yourself another one and then of course you can fiddle with your outline all you'd like but we're going to be using our medium brush for the next step so you can just get ready all right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting our base coat for the unicorn. So I'm gonna use my medium brush. I suppose you could use a combination of your medium brush and your large brush, wherever your comfort zone is, is totally fine by me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself kind of a medium warm gray color. So I'm gonna separate a little bit of my brown out because I'm gonna want it for later. So I'm gonna separate that out and then I'm gonna use the rest of my brown plus some white and a touch of black to get this brown, like a brownish gray type of color. I want this to be my base coat for my unicorn. You could certainly have your unicorn any color you want. You could have a black one or a white one or a gray one or a, you know, like I'm going for kind of a neutral grayish tone grayish brown type kind of tone but you could certainly make yours whatever color you want this is a unicorn it can be anything you imagine it to be so once you've got the color your desired color what you're going to do is you're just going to paint the entire the entire animal in so i'm going to go a little bit slower when i'm up in the in the smaller areas just so i can kind of stay within my lines um, and then once I, once I start going into the larger areas, I might switch to my, to my large brush, but I think, I think using this, um, medium brush will give me some good control around the edges so I can color within the lines, which isn't always necessarily an important thing, but I think I want to try and keep my shape of my unicorn the way that I had initially intended it to be. So this type of brush will help me to make sure that I get around those edges the way that I want to. And then I'm just going to kind of go slow around the edges. And again, if you feel like you want to or need to reshape anything, now's definitely a great time to um, do that. And if you find that some of your pencil marks are a little bit outside of where you want them to be, just don't paint them. And then after the, the neighboring paint dries, you can just go back and erase them. So you can certainly um, know that you can erase your pencil if you need to. Some pencils are a little bit more difficult to erase than others. So if you have a difficult time, you can always just um, erase it the best that you can and then just add another layer of paint on top of it and that will get it to to disappear for you and then i'm just going right up to the edge where the mane is back here i'm not terribly concerned about staying within the lines because i know i'm going to have a big huge beautiful mane that's going to cover that area anyways and as i go through this i'm not really terribly concerned about getting a perfect coat to this um, to this layer of paint because I know that we are going to be painting the entire thing over again with another layer so this is really just providing me with a base coat to work from and it's going to make our painting process a whole lot easier when we get to um, where we want to add details and highlights and shadows and all that good stuff because we've got this great foundation um, to work from. And then choosing to use a nice neutral kind of, it'll, it, it's kind of a darker type of um, gray just because I know that that's going to help me 
to get some really nice natural and kind of organic and realistic type of um, effects to the to the I want to call it a horse I know it is a horse a type of horse but it's a unicorn so I when I was doing my research on this I, I guess there are some really unicorns in this world I thought it was all just kind of a a fancy type thing but I, I don't know if it was just the um, the internet that was telling me that unicorns really do exist or they actually really do exist <laughs> so you never know what to believe these days so So if you believe that unicorns really exist, then they, I'm sure that they do. And you know, it, anything is possible in this world. So I'm going with the belief system that they do exist. So you can, you can make yours whatever imaginative thought you want. But when I get down to where it's hitting the ground, I'm not really concerned about that because we're going to hide it with, um, with a whole bunch of flowers and all that good stuff. So don't worry about making that. Uh, clean you can certainly just leave it on the messier side and then again I'm just kind of going right up to my pencil marks and this this type of brush again is helping me to maintain a pretty clean edge as I'm going through there I just got this little little piece left to go once I've got all my outlines in here the the center area becomes the freeform fun last minute just kind of um, painting it all in and there we go in through there and if you wanted to you could also paint the sides or the edges of your um, canvas that way you won't feel the need to put a frame around it once it's all done and it gives it a very nice professional look when those edges are nice and painted in and then once you've got this step all nice and completed we hmm, what are we going to do next we're actually going to use our small brush for the next step so once you've got this base coat created on your beautiful unicorn, you can put this medium brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting our eye and our nose and our mouth. I'm gonna be using our, the small brush. The colors that I'm using are black, white, I'm gonna use a little bit of yellow and maybe some brown and maybe some of that base color as well. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna first put those three features into place with a little bit of black on my brush. So I'm gonna, I'm using my small brush and just black paint. I'm gonna have my eye in through here and the horse's head is looking down a little bit. So I'm going, to have, I'm going to start it with a circle and then we'll add a couple of little um, areas on the left and the right of it. So if you travel from the left cor corner of this ear and straight down, a little bit past where your horn comes out, that's going to be about the top of the circle. And then my circle is only going to be maybe about, I don't know, half to three quarters of an inch tall and wide. So I'm just kind of creating my circle in through here, something like this. And yours doesn't have to be exactly the same size as mine. It can be bigger, it can be smaller, whatever you want it to be. If you make it bigger, the horse is gonna look a little bit younger. If you make the eyes smaller, it will look a little older. So you can certainly play with the age of it like that. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out this top right hand corner and I'm gonna pull the bottom left hand corner down into the face a little bit. So that adds the little inside corners of the eye. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, while that's drying, I'm gonna come and put my nostril in place. So my nostril is, I'm gonna have the top of it somewhere in this vicinity. It's gonna be kind of on the oval type of shape, but you don't want it too, too big. So if you were to kind of come down from the left hand side of the eye it's going to come up about that far over and you want to leave some space underneath it for the muzzle part of the of the um, unicorn 
and I'm just kind of getting this on here. It doesn't even have to be perfectly executed around the sides. It would almost look better if it's soft. We're going to put a highlight on it in a second. And then I'm using a little bit more black paint to create where my, my mouth is going to go. So I'm just going to do a little sliver somewhere in this vicinity just to give you a little bit of a bottom lip kind of thing. And then once I've got them in place, now I just need to manipulate the edges a little bit and give it um, some, some twinkle in the eye. So I'm going to wash and dry my small brush. And I'm going to put a little bit of yellow in the bottom portion of that eye. That's going to make it, uh, you're going to be able to see a little bit of the colored part of the eye just to give it a bit of dimension to it. Nothing major, just a little bit just to um, add some color to it. Just wipe my brush off on my paper towel. And if your yellow ends up a little bit on the greener side and it's not too appealing to you because it's on top of that black, you could always, believe it or not, add a touch of pink to it. That's gonna make it look a little bit more on the orangey type side. So if yours is a little bit um, not turning the color you want, you can certainly add a touch of pink to it. Then what I'm going to do is I picked up a touch of white paint and I'm going to add a little bit of a twinkle in my eye. And I did stay a little away from the edge of that black paint um, just so it gave me a little bit more dimension in it. And of course you can keep tweaking this little part as much as you want to, but I just gave it a little tiny twinkle in it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself like a little bit of an eyebrow bone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make myself a little bit of a lighter gray color that's a little bit lighter than my, um, my base color for my, my horse. So I'm just going black and white and you can add a little bit of that base color as, as you want, but just I want it to be a little bit lighter. So we'll refer to this as light gray as we go through, as we go through the process. So just, I don't want it white, just something a little bit lighter than what I had for the um, main coat. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it a little bit of a eyelid in through here. So just kind of bringing this like this. And I want it to look like it blends in with the rest of the horse. So I'm gonna actually pick up a tiny bit of black to give it a little bit of a shadow above that eyelid where it meets the face or meets the head. So something like that is gonna give me that bit of a shadow. And then same thing underneath the eye. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a shadow. So I just picked up a little bit of black and water and the water is gonna give me, allow me to get this to be a little bit more on the see-through side. And then once I've got that in there, we'll, we'll finagle the rest of the face in a little while, but I just working on the eye right now. I wanna give it a little bit of eyelashes. So I'm picking up a touch of white paint and from that upper right hand corner of the eye, I'm just gonna pull out a couple of little cute eyelashes in through here. I'm gonna also pick up now a bit of black paint just so we can get there to be some dimension in these eyelashes and they can go right in front of the eye a little bit. Just the smaller you go, the more natural that they're gonna look and I've given them a little bit of a bend as well. And then I'm gonna do a similar exercise with that highlight around my nostril. So I'm just gonna wash and dry my little brush again and I'm going to give um, that, pick up that light gray and give myself a bit of a highlight around this upper right hand corner of that nostril. Now I'm picking up my base coat and just kind of getting it to blend in a little bit, something like that. I'm gonna put a little bit of an area coming in from the muzzle that's going to blend into the nostril. So this is a little bit of a gradient that you create going into that nostril, which makes it look nice and natural again. So something like that. And then if you need to or want to, you can certainly tweak that little front muzzle part in through there. And then same thing around the mouth. If you wanted a little bit of lightness at the bottom of the mouth, you can certainly bring some of that lighter tone of the um, gray in through there. And then we are gonna be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your eye, your nostril, and your mouth all nice and taken care of, and you've done any little modifications that you want, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. 
All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we are finishing our uh, horn, unicorn horn, <laughs> and our ears. So I'm using my small brush. I'm going to be using my light gray, black, brown, and white as my color combinations. So I'm going to hit my ears first. So I want, whoops, just dropped my brush. Hold on a second. <laughs> so I'm going to have some darkness on the inside of the ears. This ear to the right is the one that's closest to us. So I'm adding some brown and black on my brush. And this, the inside of this ear is going to cross into the head a little bit. So I'm just taking it and I don't want to have perfect edges to it. I am really just making my brush go really messy right now. I'm leaving a little bit of a sliver back here for the, um, for the back part of the ear. And then I'm going to pick up, I didn't say I was going to use my base color, but I guess I want to where, it, where that uh, shadow meets the head. I just want to get that to blend in just a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other ear. So black and brown are the colors. And this time I need to stop right at the top of the head. So that way it looks like it's on the other side of the head. And this one can be of a lesser sliver of darkness. This is the inside of the ear because it might be turned a little bit or however you foresee it being. And then I'm going to just wipe my brush off on my paper towel. I'm picking up some of that light gray color and I'm adding a little bit of a highlight on the edge of the ear, something like that, just to give it some um, little fluffy fur of sorts on the edge of that of the ear, somewhere in through here, and you can even add a bit towards the back side. You could tap it on, you could rub it on, whatever, whatever is working for you. I'm bringing it all the way up to the top, and then I'm going to pick up a teeny bit of white paint and get just this little tiny pieces on the edge. Oh boy, <laughs> I, I hear the, the signs of a woodpecker starting to peck outside of my studio right now. So I'm just adding just a teeny bit of white on the edges of the ear, just so it looks like maybe they're, they're glowing just a, a little bit. And you can certainly kind of reshape or add as much little highlights as you want. And then I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm going to kind of repeat that thought process for the horn. So I know that the horn is going to go into the head somewhere in through here. So that's where my shadow is going to start. So I've got brown and black on my brush at the same time. And this is a lot of this is going to be hidden by the mane or the hair of the of the unicorn. So I don't really need to go too too um, dramatic with it, but I definitely want it to look like there's um, a shadow kind of where it enters into the into the head of sorts so something like this and then just going to get it to kind of blend in with the with the main area of that horn once i've got that entry shadow type of area i'm going to add a little bit of shadow on the bottom side of the horn this is going to start that spiral look to it so I'm using black on my brush plus a little bit of white. That's going to allow me to um, have these smooth type of lines to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the at the bottom and just give myself these little type of whoops. I think I need a little bit more paint on my brush. These little type of curves like this, and they're going to get closer and closer to each other as they. Uh, go farther towards the tip of the um, of the horn, so that way, <clears throat> excuse me, it looks like they're getting farther and farther away. So once I've got that on there, and you can make it as pointy as you want, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush, and I'm using that light gray color to do the opposite, kind of on on the on the top side of it. So I'm going to go in between those little grooves that I just made with the black with this light gray type of color. So I'm kind of going towards the top and then just bringing it down and I'm leaving some of that mid-tone from the original 
um, base coat that we did in between. So that's going to give you that more realistic three-dimensional look to it. And of course it's getting a little bit bigger as it goes towards the these bigger ones over in through here. And then I'm going to get these last couple to blend in a little bit more with that base coat. So I just wiped my brush off just making sure that they blend naturally in through here. Yeah, that's working. And then once I've got that done, I'm going to pick up a little bit of white and give it a real nice bright highlight at the top of these um, the spiral to it. So I just have white paint on my brush and I'm just taking it and giving it in this little curved fashion right at the top and that's going to give you that bright bright highlight. And then we are going to be using our, um, we're actually going to use our large brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your small brush away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we're adding our shadows on the body of the horse, so or unicorn. <laughs> so I'm gonna use my large brush. I'm gonna be using my base color and black. And if you need to tweak it a little bit, you can certainly modify as much as you need to. So my whole thought process is, is the bottom of the horse is shadowed and the top is highlighted, but there's some contours to this animal. So I want to make sure that I can kind of incorporate like the roundness of the animal as well. So I'm going to be adding this is going to be my leg that is on our side. So I'm going to add a shadow on its belly and behind this leg. I'm going to add a little bit of shadow at the bottom of the chest in through here, which will be above where this leg will eventually go. I'm going to add a shadow on this leg because this leg will be is in the shadows from the entire body. So I'll add one on there. And then I'm going to add one underneath this the the head portion in through here on the front of the chest. And if I feel I need to do any more after that, I'll let you know. So what I'm going to do is I will never have a ton of paint on my brush. I want to be able to control um, the quantity of paint and where it goes. So I'm not going to have a lot of paint on my brush. And if you're going through this process and you feel like this is too big of a brush for you to use, you could certainly switch to a smaller type of brush that's going to allow you to push that paint around. So something firm. So I'm going to put a tiny bit of black paint on my brush, just very, very little bit on my brush. And I'm going to put my area in place. And then as soon as I've kind of got it in place, then I'm going to start picking up my original base color to blend it in. So I've got this shadow is going to come somewhere in through here because this is going to be the back of this leg in through here. And then the shadow is going to be the darkest down at the bottom where it meets the, um, the bottom of the belly. So I'm just kind of pulling my shadow out in through here like this. Now I'm going to start picking up some of that uh, the original base color that I had to get this to blend in. So if you wanted to, you could certainly just create a darker version of your background color, or you can do as I'm doing and just kind of blend it onto the canvas. Whatever, whatever works for you is totally fine, but you want to be able to get it to blend into that upper region. So if you needed to, you could certainly wash and dry your brush. I'm just going to kind of wipe mine off on my paper towel and pick up more of that base color just so I can get it to blend in something like this. And we will be doing um, a highlight to the upper portion of this body as well. So don't feel like if you don't have a perfect transition at this point that the, the, the gig is up because you will have that opportunity to to tweak that when we go to do the highlight as well. Now that I, now I'm going to go ahead and add my shadow to this back leg in through here. And if I bump into this leg, that's OK. I can just kind of maneuver my brush a little bit. And again, if you feel like this brush is too big for you, you can certainly switch to a smaller brush. I'm really just using the remnants of what I had on my brush from over there to to start this shadow, I'm picking up a tiny bit more black just to make sure that it's really nice and dark up at the top. So it gives you that great illusion 
of it being shadowed by the other leg. And then once I've got that, I'm gonna go ahead and move up to the top of this leg in through here. I don't really need much in the bottom of this um, chest. So I'm really just using the remnants on my brush and I'm just gonna kind of rub in an area that is above this leg. And then I'm just gonna kind of rub it into that chest a bit in through here and then just get this to blend in with the color that is above it. So something like this, well, that'll work for me. And then I'm gonna do the same thing underneath the chin. I am gonna pick up just a little bit more black on my brush and of course you might need or have enough on your brush. Everybody's quantity is gonna be a little bit different. So what I'm first gonna do is give myself a little bit of an outline where I want the, the jaw in essence to go or the side of the face to go. So I'm just gonna kind of bring this up just a little bit like that, not much. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just rub my brush in this corner because this is gonna be the darkest of the corner, something like this. And then I want some to come travel down that chest to show the viewer that that head is maybe casting a little bit of a shadow on the chest and go in through here. And again, if you want to or need to, you can pick up that original color to get it to blend in, but I'm feeling like mine is blending pretty well as we go through this process. You could also, if you wanted to, you could add a little bit more shadow on the face. That's you know totally up to you. If you want yours to look a little bit more muscular, you can just kind of add these little faint shadows in through there, but we'll be adding some highlights on there in a minute, which will give that more form. And then, oh, I need a little shadow. I forgot about a little my little shadow behind this knee in through here. So I'm just using the remnants on my brush to just kind of get a little bit of a shadow to appear behind this knee. That's looking pretty good to me. And then again, if you wanted to or needed to um, <clears throat> uh, pick up your original color, you can certainly do that to get it to, to blend in a little bit more. And then we are gonna be using the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your shadows on your body, you can wash and dry this large brush. Oop, almost just picked up my paint water <laughs> and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we are, in essence, finishing the fur, which is gonna include the highlights and any tweaking that we need to do to the main area of the, of the fur. I'm gonna use my large brush. The colors that I'm gonna be using are the light gray that we created, white, and my base coat. Um, I forget what I ended up calling that one, maybe like a medium tannish gray color. <laughs> I forget what I called it, but the base coat of the, of the um, unicorn. So similar to how we did the shadows, I have some distinct areas where I want the highlights to go. So definitely on the top of the animal is gonna have the highlights, but also the areas that are poking out the most, which would be like the chest, the, um, the leg, the top of the leg, in through here, I will have a little bit of a highlight to show the contour of the chest. I definitely want to highlight on the butt, <laughs> so that's gonna look like it's being illuminated by the light. And the face, I don't need a lot on the face because most of it's gonna be hidden by the mane, but I definitely wanna make sure that I have a solid coat of paint so it doesn't look like I have um, some uneven paint. So. I will be adding a little bit of highlight maybe to the cheek area, maybe some little muscles on the muzzle area, and then just making sure that I have a good coat of paint throughout the rest of it. So I think I'm gonna start with just kind of putting the light gray in the places where I want the highlights the most. So I'm, I've got my large brush, I'm using some of that light gray color. I definitely want um, the rear end to have a nice light highlight to it. And again, as I'm doing this, I can get it to blend in a little bit with that neighboring color. I'll come back and, and get it to smooth out a bit more in a minute. But right now I'm just kind of getting my, setting my stage, so to speak, of where I want my highlights. I definitely want one on the top of this leg coming in through here. So I'm adding that in through here. And I like using these bristle brushes because I've got 
the control to push the paint where where I want it to go and to to get it to almost blend by just scrubbing it or rubbing it into the the paint around it so that's going to start that in through there I definitely want one on this chest in through here so making sure that I've got that but it needs to kind of transition into that shadow you don't want, just want to have a bright area where the chest is and then no transition into the shadow so getting this to have a little bit of lightness on it to show that chest area something like this and again I will get this all to blend in in a minute just wanting to get these highlighted areas on in through here and then maybe a little bit on this face so I'm just adding a bit where I want that cheek maybe a little bit on this front of the head again it's gonna a lot of it's gonna be hidden with the um, with the mane but this this again just gets it gets it going for us and now I'm gonna start picking up that of uh, the base coat that we used to make sure that everything blends in nice and well together and that I do have a complete coverage on the entire um, animal so I don't want there to be any area that I left unattended even though we did put a base coat on the whole thing we definitely want to make sure that we have a second coat in order to make sure that everything is um, fully executed a lot of times with acrylic paint one coat is not going to do it because acrylic paint tends to be more on the translucent side so adding that second layer is always going to be beneficial to you so i'm going to get these to to blend in together horses have very short hair so i'm not really terribly concerned or fur um, about except for their mane their body fur is very short so i don't really need to give the viewer any information about the direction of the fur so I am able to just kind of scrub the paint on here to um, get it to blend in with the neighboring areas when I'm doing fur a lot of times I'll talk about doing a directional paint stroke so you can get everything to look to, to tell the viewer what direction the fur is going in but in this case we don't really need that um, so I want to get this area in through here making sure that I've got fully painted areas in through here I still am going to do a bright lighter highlight so in through this area this is probably the trickiest area of the um, of the anatomy of the horse so I've got the back side of the leg in through here it's got like an elbow in this area but I want this area to all look like it's coming out a bit so I'm going to use my base color plus my light gray to get this to have a little bit more of an area that comes out at the viewer so it doesn't look so flat. So this is adding that little bit of a contour type of highlight and you can do the same thing for the for the chest area. If if you're not getting it to blend in as much as you want and you want it to pop out a little bit more you can utilize both of those colors on your brush to get it to transition from one to the next and then you just want to make sure that wherever you've got it going into the shadow that they blend in as well so even if you have to pick up some of your shadow color just to get that to to blend in mm, that's looking nice I think I want this to be just a little bit lighter in through maybe in through here and you know you step back I always recommend when you're doing a step like this to walk away or get a little bit from at a distance from the painting because when you're sitting this close to it sometimes it's just really difficult to see if you have executed it the way that you want so now I'm picking up some white paint I did not wash my brush this is going to allow me to get the brightest of the bright highlights that I want like on the knee and on the chest so I just have white on my brush and I'm going to I really want there to be a nice bright highlight right on the tip of this knee that's going to say that it is the closest to whatever that glowing source is and again if this large brush is too large for you you can certainly switch to a smaller brush and then I'm just going to kind of rub it in and make sure that it makes sense and blends in with the rest of it and then let's see oh I want a little bit 
of that brightness on the tip of the chest. So I just picked up a bit more white and I'm gonna add this bit of a glow right on that tip of the chest. And you could certainly utilize this step to manipulate the shape of the chest if you felt that it needed to have a little bit more um, shape or muscles or anything like that. You could certainly utilize this step to execute that. And then I'm just gonna kinda keep tweaking where I feel I need, you know, any bit more bits of highlights, but I think I'm pretty good it, as far as this stage goes. And then we are going to be utilizing our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got all of your beautiful horses highlights and everything is looking the way that you want it to, you can put this brush away take out your medium brush as I'm gonna as I'm gonna just keep on tweaking here a little little tip on the nose here <laughs> and then I'll take out my medium brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting our wild forest grass I'm gonna be using my medium brush and I'm gonna be using brown green black and white and how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna do it very, very carefree and in a messy fashion. But in my head, <laughs> I have this area that the unicorn is walking through is gonna be kind of illuminated and bright. So I'm not gonna do too much dark um, grass in through here, but I'm gonna do some dark grass down at the bottom. I'm gonna do some dark grass coming up in through this side and I'll do a couple of pieces coming, you know, up into this area, silhouetted area a little bit. So I'm gonna start with black and green on my brush. And when I do this, I want the bottom of my canvas to be the darkest, bottom right, and then maybe over here is gonna have the most too. So just black and green. And what I'm gonna do is I'm really just kind of going up in a carefree manner. I'm gonna keep reloading my brush with black and green, making sure I've got a good assortment down at this bottom with the darker grass. And then once I've got a good amount down at the bottom, you can see I'm crossing over my leg right now. So this way, the leg looks like it is nice and hidden, or the foot is nice and hidden within the um, forest floor of wild grassness in through here. So I'm bringing this over here, a little bit more green on my brush, making sure that I've got some good transition. I'm gonna bring a couple pieces up a little bit higher into here. I think I'm, at, I'm gonna add green and white to my brush as I come up into this lighter region, so that way they almost look like they're being illuminated by the glow from behind the unicorn as well. So this was just a little bit darker at the bottom. Now I'm adding a little bit of green and white to my brush and I'm not overdoing it. I know I'm gonna have some flowers in a bit. Um, so I am definitely not overdoing the grass, but I, I want it to look nice and full. Right now I just have green on my brush. I'm just kind of like tapping it in to make sure that I've got some, some good volume, but not overdoing it. So right now I still only just kind of picked up my green and my black. And then as I transition over into this side, I'm gonna do some green, black, and brown over in through here. So now I'm starting to pick up a little bit of green, black, and brown. And this is gonna give me some taller pieces in through here, just using the tip of my brush, making sure that I've got good movement on my pieces of grass, which means they're not all standing straight up. It means that they've got some bend and some curve to them, giving some good dimension over here, maybe with a bit, couple black pieces coming out over in this side. And then as I start to work my way down towards where I feel that glowy part of the path is gonna be, I am going to stop using my darker colors and I'll start using lighter colors. But right now I'm still just using the green, brown, and black to kind of get this area in through here. And now I'll go back to the green and white without washing my brush and start to add some of these brighter pieces, similar to how we made a glow over there on the left. I'll do the same thing going throughout this little pathway 
with some green and some white. So this will make these pieces of grass look like they, they're also being illuminated by whatever the glow is being cast behind our beautiful unicorn. And you can get these to overlap into the neighboring pieces. That's gonna make it look really nice and beautiful and full. And of course you can keep some of those colors from underneath still peeking through. That's gonna make it look beautiful as well and nice and lush and full. And then we are going to be using our uh, we're going to use our large brush for the next step. So once you've got your wild grass all nice and created here, you can put your medium brush away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're doing the first layer of the mane. So this is going to be a fun building process for our mane and I am going to be using my bristle brush because I want this to look full and beautiful and have dimension to it. So I'm going to use this brush and we're going to build layers. The first layer that we're doing is going to be like a light brown color. So how I'm going to do that, you could either take your original color that you have here or you could use a little bit of brown and white, whatever shade you'd like it to be. You just want it to be a little bit lighter than this and maybe a little bit browner to give um, more of a blonde, white type of hair undercoat. <laughs> I don't know if that made sense, but it made sense in my head. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take my brown and add a little bit of white to it. And this is gonna give me just like a light brown. So kind of like a tan type of color. And when I do this, I am not going to be using a lot of paint on my brush. So I'm going somewhere in this vicinity. It's a little bit lighter than my base coat and it's a little bit browner than my base coat. So I'm gonna wipe my brush off on the side of my palette because I do not need a lot of paint. This is a building process. So we don't need a lot of paint. So I want this to look like it's coming off of here and it's just flowing down the sides. And I'm gonna have a little bit over on coming, poking out the other side of the body in through here. I'm gonna have some coming, streaming down the face. And I know that I'm gonna be doing multiple layers. So right now, I'm really just kind of setting the stage or giving myself a roadmap to where I want my, my hair to go. So I can start right at the top. I'm gonna to have some coming out between my ears. And I just started and I felt that I have too much paint on my brush. So I'm gonna wipe it off on my paper towel. I don't want a lot of paint because I wanna be able to control it. And I want to be able to use a little corner of my brush. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kind of pull some in front of this ear. And you can see I'm just leaving these little singular pieces along the edge. I want some to come uh, up on the other side of my horn. So I'm just gonna bring this in through here. I want some to kind of cascade down the face. I want some to come over in front of the, the horn in through there and just kind of cascade down that face. So you can see I'm hardly doing anything right now. This is really just setting the stage and what's gonna happen because I have this tan type of layer underneath, it's going to provide me with a ton of dimension when I go to make those little singular strands of, um, of the mane later. So I've got, I just reloaded my brush a little bit because I'm going to start working down this side. When I am doing it, the edge of it, I again am only using the tip of my brush and I want to be able to give it a little bit of movement so I'm just kind of pulling this out and maybe curving it. If I want it to curve a little bit, I don't want it to be too curly in essence. You might want yours to be curly, but I'm just going for kind of a long flowing type of mane. And then once I've got my, in essence, kind of my outline in through here, now I can kind of just start to dictate where these longer pieces are gonna go. I have this whole exterior area that I want. So this is a time where if you wanted, if your neck, you felt that it was too slender, you could certainly 
add more volume with it, but I want to be able to see some of that that um, colors behind it. So when I do this, I'm going to leave these little like peekaboo spots. So that's going to show you the dimension of the hair itself. And the base coat from the horse underneath also provides us with additional dimension to this mane. So as I come down the back and through here, I'm going to decide how long I want my mane to go. And this, this thing's going to be pretty long. It's going to go almost to you know the the leg itself it might almost even go down towards the belly area down in through here so i really want mine to be super long and flowy and maybe cascading over the back of the the animal so i'm just going to continue to kind of get this on here and you can see i'm taking my time i'm probably taking more time on this part than i did on the rest of the animal because i, I know how important for me this this aspect of this is um on on the horse itself so that way i've got the the look that i want to go for and then as i get in towards where the leg is i really don't have much paint on my brush at all and i'm just trying to control where i'm putting it and then i want a little bit coming out on this other side and if i bump into my chest like i just did that's okay i can i can correct that but i definitely want to give myself a couple of little pieces coming out over here just to accentuate the fact of how long and beautiful this mane is and then once you've got this coat on and you want to make sure they kind of match so you don't want super long stuff over here and super short stuff over here so i'm going to actually add a couple of more long pieces in through here just to make sure that this side both sides look like they are gonna belong together and then once i've got my my road map of sorts all nice and um started we are going to be switching back yeah that's looking pretty we're gonna switch back to our um medium brush and there we go get ready for the next step all right so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting our flowers on the forest floor. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush and I'm going to be using blue, purple, pink, and white. And if I feel I need any more fillers with the grass, I can certainly dip back into my green or my black or my brown to make any little fillers that I want. So in this process, I am making imaginary fantasy type flowers. So I am not gonna be doing anything more fancy than mark making of sorts but i i want to give some kind of illusion that they're flowers so every now and again i might throw in something that might resemble an actual flower but when i get like into this area i'm really just going to kind of be doing these little like dots and dashes and just making sure i have some bright colors in there so i'm going to start maybe over in through here so you can see um, some just I guess distinct shapes of flowers um, and at any time because I know my brain when it goes to making fun carefree flowers and stuff of this nature I'm just going to keep alternating these colors on my brush so I'm going to be using the purple blue or pink, purple, blue, and white. You could certainly use yellow too if you wanna have some yellow flowers, that'd be super cool. Um, and I'll just alternate these colors. So right now, for fun sake, I'm gonna put pink, purple, blue, and white on my brush at the same time. So I have four colors on my brush at the same time. And I'm gonna start over here and maybe, maybe I'll have one that has like three little pieces to it like this. So maybe those look like actual flowers themselves. Maybe I've got some purple ones in through here, maybe just kind of dotting like that. So you can make them resemble something if you if you want to give it some sort of organized order, or you can just kind of sit here and start making these like beautiful little dots and dashes, and that's going to provide that carefree kind of look to it. Um, which will give you the impression of flowers, but because you're more or less just kind of wiggling your brush throughout the process, that will give you um, more of that, I don't know, that abstract illusion type of 
um, look to it where you're just giving the impression of the of these flowers and of course if you want more pink you use more pink I like using the multiple colors on my brush at the same time because it provides me with an easy way to create um, little dimension throughout it and then I'm just going to kind of well maybe maybe we need one or two more over here <laughs> and then I'm going to work my way towards the towards the left let me just get a couple more in through here maybe we've got a couple poking out underneath here and then as i work my way towards this left especially in this area this is going to be where i'm going to have more twinkly maybe whiter type of ones um, and if at any time like right now i feel like my brush is overloaded you can just wipe it off on your paper towel if you want to make some colors, like if you want your purple to be more pink, you can mix the two of them together and give yourself some, you know, fuchsia type color. Just enjoy this process. Wiggle your brush a little bit. And just have fun and, you know, get these colors to appear where you want them to. Um, just give you the illusion of a little flower here and there and then as I work my way up towards uh, this left hand side again up in through here I'm going to be using more white but I just want to feel like I need some more little twinkly pieces in through here so just adding a little bit more white on what I'm going to kind of refer to as my as my path of sorts going down in through here just to make it look like he's going somewhere sparkly and then i'm going to go ahead and add some of these other ones up in through here and again if pink is is calling you use more pink if the blue is you know something that's bringing pleasure to your painterly eye then use more of that it, you know just feel free to adapt this to whatever way is looking pretty to you and then we let's see what are we going to do for the next step we're actually going to be using our large brush for the next step so once you've got all of your beautiful flowers in here you can put your medium brush away yeah put your medium brush away take out your large brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're in essence finishing the mane we might put some little color accents on it later but this is the big step for the mane so i'm going to be using my large brush the colors that I'm going to be using are the light gray that we created, not the, not the tan, but the light gray that we did our highlights with, as well as white. And of course, if you need to go into any other colors, you certainly can, but those are going to be the colors that I use. So I'm going to start with light gray, and I'm in essence going to put a quick, well, seemingly quick, <laughs> second layer on the main, but I don't want to cover up all of the first layer that's there for a purpose it's there to add dimension so when you're doing this don't feel like you have to go on top of every single strand that you just did so again this is a less is more kind of step so I'm going to take my brush and I'm putting it in my gray paint but I'm going to wipe it off my light gray paint but I'm wiping it off on the side of my palette and I'm going to do the same thing. Most of the time I'm going to be using, especially when I'm doing these skinnier pieces, I'll be using the corner of my brush. So I'm coming in between the ears and just kind of pulling some of this out in through here. And again, if you bump into your, to your um, horn, don't worry. You, those little tweaks or little things you can certainly come back and, and fix after after everything is put into place and dried and then of course I'm going to put some little some little hairs coming over in through here and again I'm going in the direction that I did initially so it's giving me that movement but I'm not necessarily coloring over a hundred percent that uh, that base coat of the mane that is and then I'm going to bring some over on this side and just make sure it looks like it's flowing naturally in front of the um, horn and then I'm going to bring some cascading and falling down the side of the face something like this and again I'm just using the corner of my brush so that way I don't end up having um, this, these really thick pieces of 
um, of hair. They're just s nice, gentle, skinnier kinds of pieces. And then I'm going to have some coming in front of the um, the muzzle area and through here. So just letting this kind of hang over the front, something like that. And I'm building it a little bit further out as I'm going towards these lighter pieces. So this is going to give it more um, movement as well. And I'll do the same thing as I go towards um, the, the back as well. So here we go. I'm going to start working my way towards the back. And again, I'm going in the same direction that I that I laid my my roadmap down on. So I'm going to go ahead and give myself a couple of little pieces coming down in through here. And again, I'm just using the corner of my brush or the side of it so that way I can have these more individual pieces and you can see the darkness in between them, which is going to give you that realistic feel to it. And then I'm giving it some waves so you can certainly see the movement of it, bringing it down in front of that chest piece. So that's going to, um, again, give you more information of the form of the body as well. And then as I come in through here, again, I'm not coloring the whole thing, but I'm making sure that I give it enough movement so it looks like it is freely falling on, on the horse. And then as I come down in through here, just making sure I've got some good representation of both of the colors. And when we start to add that white in a minute, that's where this is all gonna really um, come to life and make it look super, super um, realistic. But again, you can have yours as full as you want or as subtle as you want. I'm gonna add a little bit of this to the pieces that are on the other side of the chest over here. And then I'm gonna just start dipping my brush in white paint. So once I've got this on here, I'm just adding a little bit on top of there. Oh yeah, this is looking good. Now I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm just gonna pick up some white on the tip of my brush like this. And that's gonna to start to add my, um, my brightest hair. So when I do this, I'm, I like this brush because it gives me a lot of control with the individual pieces and I can really pull them. But if this turns out to be too big for you, you can certainly go into your medium or your small brush to do those little tiny individual pieces along the face. So you feel free to go wherever your comfort zone is. But right now I just have white paint on my brush and this is where I'm going to really tell the viewer where all of these little pieces are <clears throat> and give that, oh, I've got a little froggy in my throat right now. <laughs> give a little bit of this um, extreme kind of curve to it as, you're, as I'm coming around the head and through here. This is going to guide the viewer again how this hair is laying down on the face, how it's cascading over the horn and then how it kind of comes and lays down in through here. And again, yours can lay much different than mine. It doesn't have to be exactly as mine is. This is just the way that I have chosen to do mine, but you can certainly make yours go as, you know, as curly or as straight as you want. And you can see as I'm adding this white paint on top, it's really coming to life. I can have little pieces kind of laying just right on top of that muzzle. This is a great one of those great steps where if you had stuff that you wanted to hide that didn't come out exactly as you wanted to, you could certainly use all of this hair to, to hide things for yourself. And then I'm going to go ahead and move on to um, the, the, main, the, the main main area in a second, just making sure that I have some little pieces in through here that I want. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. And of course you can make your, you know, keep tweaking yours as much as you want. I think I'm gonna have a couple of little pieces coming a little bit further in through here and then coming down in through here. I wanna make sure that these really read as just kind of falling down the side. And then as I go up into this back area, I can certainly be much more liberal with the quantity of paint because I'm not working on such delicate little pieces, but I still want to maintain the depth and the dimension of those colors that we put underneath. So I am obviously utilizing still the corner of my brush, but I am consciously trying not to overdo it and making sure that I keep some of that 
the colors underneath still showing. And of course, I am still using a kind of a curved type of brush stroke, especially along here, which is going to lead the viewer to understand that it's kind of growing out of the horse and then just kind of cascading down with gravity. So you can certainly, um, you know, get yours to go whatever, which way that you want. But again, I am not using a lot of paint at this point, just kind of making sure that it all works well together. And every time I feel, if I feel myself pushing too hard, that tells me I don't have enough paint on my brush. So if you find yourself really, like I just felt I was pushing too hard to get the paint off of my brush, if I push too hard, I'm gonna end up losing all of that dimension. So you wanna make sure that you have not too much paint on your brush, but enough so you can, you can still dictate what's happening. If you if you start pushing really hard, what's gonna happen is you'll you'll start to get a solid color. So just you know, you'll feel feel your own brush, and and when you when you feel like it's not doing what you want, it probably means that you need a different quantity of paint on there. And then we are going to be switching to our medium brush for the next step. You don't want to forget this little piece in through here too. So just adding a little bit of white in through here. Um, and then we're going to utilize this, uh, not this brush, the small, no, I'm sorry. My brain's a little, a little weird right now. We're going to utilize our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your beautiful mane on here and you can just kind of keep tweaking. And if you find that you went too far on any areas, you can certainly bring back some of that original gray or you can keep adding little bits of the white or use a different brush to get you um, those individual pieces. But once you've got your mane as beautiful as you'd like, you can get your um, medium brush out and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're adding bubbles and bu bubbles to the sky and colored streaks to the main. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush and the colors I'm using are pink, yellow, blue, and white and water. Well, water's not a color, but that's part of my tool. <laughs> um, you could certainly use whatever colors you want. You could have um, you know, green bubbles, you could have any color, you could have white bubbles, you could have any colors you want. So my thought is that these bubbles are just going to be really transparent and translucent and are going to see right through. They're just going to give you this d more of a dreamy fantasy type of glow to the painting. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you a couple of um, different ways to do this or different colors. So. Uh, I want to use my yellow, but I don't want to have yellow bubbles. I'm going to have like peach bubbles. So I'm going to take a little bit of pink and a little bit of white and just spin them together. So I have like this beautiful kind of peach color. And then I'll also be doing, so I'll do some of them with this color. I'll also do some with my just pink color and maybe one or two with my blue. The trick here is you want it to be see-through. So I've got my peach mixture, I've got my paintbrush, I'm gonna dip my paintbrush into some water. So that way this mixture, when I put it on my canvas, is nice and see-through. That's gonna be very vibrant to me, so I think I'm gonna add some white to my mixture as well. I don't want it too, too, too um, vibrant for me, so I just added a little bit of white to it, I've got my water in it, and now I'm gonna go ahead and make myself some bubbles. So if you feel like you have too much paint on your brush, just kind of wipe it off on your paper towel. I think I'm gonna have maybe one over in through here. And what I'm gonna do, once I've got the bubble on there, or the circle, I'm gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel and pick up a little bit more water. And what I can do is I can kind of push the paint from the inside to the outside of the circle. So what that does is it makes it so you have like a clean edge around the exterior part of it, but it's very translucent or transparent in the center of it. So you can do that. You could also, when you make that bubble, you could also, after you're done, you can pick up a tiny bit of white paint 
and add like a little bit of a highlight to it and that will make it look really nice and three-dimensional. I don't know if I'm going to do too much of the the highlight aspect of it on mine, but you could certainly do it on yours. And then you can create them wherever you want. So my next one is going to be pink. So I'm just going to use my pink and a little bit of white just to get myself a nice light pink, but you could certainly just use your pink as is, whatever works for you. And a little bit of water on my brush. I think I'm gonna have maybe one in through here. And you can have them whatever size you want. You can have big ones or little ones. So I got the circle on there and then I'm just kind of, I wiped my brush off, picked up a little bit more water and I'm just kind of pushing that paint toward the edge of the circle and I wipe my brush off on my paper towel quite frequently just so I can make sure that I have um, it doing what I want to. And I like this color. I'm not even going to add a highlight to this one. This one's going to be stay just as it is. And then I think I'm going to do maybe maybe one or two up in that top right hand corner. I like this, this uh, pink color. So I think I'm going to go for a big one up in through here. And again, you can have them whatever size you want. You can have really big ones. You can have really small ones. This one, I had a good amount of paint on my brush. So I don't even really need to do much to it. That worked out well. I'm going to do another one of those peach ones. I think this one I'm going to have up in through here. And again, you can really make these into whatever you want. You could have white bubbles. So you could just use your white paint and, um, you can have just a lighter type of translucent kind of white one if you wanted to. You could, I guess, have a yellow one if you wanted to. I just picked up a little bit of yellow and white and water, and maybe I'll have a little, a little dreamy yellow one over in through here. You can overlap them if you wanted to. So feel free to, you know, just explore the bubble making as much as you want and get them to do whatever you want them to do. Again, I just kind of put it on there and then picked up some water so I can just push that paint to the edge of it and that's gonna make it nice and translucent and get it to do what I want. Sometimes if you're doing a step like this too, if you um, if it's not pushing the paint as much as you want with the brush you're using, that might indicate that your brush is a little bit too soft. So what you could do is get a firmer brush and that would help you to um, push it a little bit further. And um, the, the firmer the brush is, the more that you'll be able to manipulate that paint as much as you want. So keep making as many of these pretty, you know, bubbles as you want. And if anything goes wrong, you can always just pick up some, some water and a firm brush and just scrub them off and make them go away. So you can totally do whatever you want to on those. And then I'm going to put some streaks in the, in the mane. So this is the same process. I'm just going to use that whatever color paint you want, plus a little bit of water. And I'm really just going to kind of add these hues. Like I got pink on my brush right now, the light pink with a little bit of water. Just add a little bit of subtle hues throughout this. Maybe now I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of blue with a little bit of water, maybe a little bit of white. You get to dictate how powerful this is. Maybe you want yours to be, see that was a little bit too, too prominent for me. So I'm going to just wipe my brush off pick up a little bit of water, and then I just can kind of rub this in. Yeah, there we go, that looks nice. And then if you do something that you feel is too much, just bring back some of the original color. So you could just put a little bit of white on top of it or the, the, um, the, the light gray. Feel free to just kind of keep tweaking this as much as you want. I think I want a little more pink in here. The pink is making me pretty happy, so I'm going to put a little bit of pink. Mm, I don't think I'm going to put any in front of there. I'm thinking that's looking pretty good. And then we have one tiny little step left to go, and it's going to be with your small brush. So once you've got all of your bubbles, maybe you know, bubble making is going to make me happy. So I'm going to make, I think I'm going to make a little, a little blue one over here. But again, you, you don't have, you know, you, you can make as many as you want or as few as you want. I'm going to make a blue one over here. <laughs> and then I'm going to put my um, medium brush away, take out my small brush, 
and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I think I'm going bottom right on this one with some black paint. I'm going to do it kind of subtle in this grass over here. You could certainly sign yours wherever you would like to. You could sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol. Whatever you'd like to do is totally fine. And that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a beautiful unicorn. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.